From all the things happening right now in Canadian politics, one man we haven't heard a lot from recently is Maxime Bernier. Maxime Bernier, known as either Mad Max or the Albertan from Quebec, he's the leader of the People's Party of Canada, probably the most frowned upon party in Canada right now. Funded in 2018, the People's Party of Canada has four basic tenets, which are freedom, responsibility, fairness, and respect. And at first, Bernier and the party got a bit of attention for it. He was going on media tours, saying some controversial stuff, drifting out of the norm of Canadian politics and the Conservative Party. But I'd say that for the past two years now, the PPC has lost a lot of that momentum, in part because of the pandemic and the fact that the Conservative Party woke up and they have a true leader now in Pierre Poiliev. So in this video, I'll give you an overview of who Maxime Bernier, the politician, is because I think his story is actually interesting and he's managed to stay relatively consistent on his political positions and values, and that's saying something given the state of Canadian politics right now. I also think he's just an interesting guy to, to look at as a Canadian politician. He doesn't have the a typical career of many politicians and for that reason I think he's just interesting overall so let's dive right into it Maxime Bernier was born in Saint-Georges, Quebec, where his father, Gilles Bernier, was a radio host and an MP for the writing of Beauce. Before getting into politics, Maxime had a diverse career in law, finance, banking, and it wasn't until 2006 where he would get into politics and take over the same writing that his father had represented. 06 was also a time where the Conservative Party had trouble getting seats in Quebec. So one of the things that he told Harper before running was that in Quebec, we have two national sports, hockey and referendum. He told him, if you don't want to have more referendums in Quebec, you have to respect the constitution and provincial autonomy. So even back then, Bernier was sort of this figure of decentralization and freedom really was in the Canadian federal government. And his victory in 06 was pretty notable where he won 67% of the vote, the largest majority for a conservative politician outside of Alberta during that time. During Stephen Harper's tenure as prime minister, Bernier would be a prominent member of the conservative party and he served in a couple of different cabinet positions. From 06 to 07, he was the minister of industry, he then became minister of foreign affairs from 2007 to 2008, but he actually resigned from that position after a scandal broke out where he had left some sensitive documents that contain national security information at his girlfriend's house and that woman turned out to be involved in organized crime whether it was the mafia or Hell hell's angels all of that kind of stuff so from there to 2011 he would be a back badge mp and then from 2011 to 2015 he would be the minister of state so small businesses tourism agriculture overall throughout that time he was known as more of a libertarian kind of guy advocating for a smaller government and and supporting economic freedom, the free market, which ultimately shaped his reputation as being just a distinct figure was in Canadian politics. And as we all know, in 2015, Harper would lose the election, Trudeau would take power, but Bernier maintained his seat in Beauce and he would automatically become one of the main candidates to take over the party. In 2017, the leadership race of the Conservative Party started and Bernier was seen as a front runner. He was proposing significant policy changes, including tax reforms, but the biggest one was abolishing the supply management management of the dairy industry. And for the people who don't know, supply management is a system in Canada that regulates the production, the pricing, and the importation of dairy, poultry, eggs. It uses quotas, sets prices, limits the importation of foreign competition, and it sometimes makes us consumers pay more for a product that we could be acquiring for a much lesser price if we had more competition. We're conservative. We believe in free markets. How uh, come we cannot have a free market under supply management? Just abolish that and we'll have more freedom. But the dairy industry in Canada is actually a big lobby, was in the Liberal Party, was in the Conservative Party. He was going out of the norm by saying he would be abolishing that system. So when it came time to actually choose a leader during the election, party members could rank their preferred candidates throughout 13 rounds. And during the first 12, Bernier led all of them, but in the last one, he would be defeated by Andrew Scheer by such a close margin where Bernier had 49% of the votes, while Scheer had one was 50.95. And the next leader of the Conservative Party of Canada with 51% of the vote. Andrew Scheer. <laughs> Obviously, this was a surprise for many, especially given the fact that he had maintained such a strong lead over the whole time. But really, people attributed his defeat to the fact that he wouldn't be supporting the supply management system, which was really unpopular among the Conservative Party. So on the surface, it seemed all was well. But in reality, I think everyone knew that Bernier was still pretty salty about the fact he lost by such a 
thin margin and everyone kind of knew why. And in April of 2018, he released a chapter of one of the books I guess he was going to release where he was criticizing the party, Andrew Scheer, and accusing them of pandering to the dairy lobby. But then Bernier went even more rogue when he started tweeting a whole bunch of stuff criticizing Justin Trudeau and his emphasis on diversity, which he described as extreme multiculturalism. And this was during a time too where even the conservative party wouldn't touch that topic. And those tweets caused a whole firestorm where even was in the conservative party, some people wanted him to be removed. But ultimately, he decided to leave the party himself. As of today, I'm no longer a member of the Conservative Party of Canada. Do we want to emphasize our ethnic and religious differences and exploit them to buy votes as the Liberals are doing? Or emphasize what unites us and the values that can guarantee social cohesion. He announced his intention of creating a new political party, which would then become the People's Party of Canada. So the People's Party of Canada was officially formed in September of 2018, just over a year before the 2019 election. This was during a time where cancel culture, free speech, diversity, political correctness were all at the forefront of politics. And the Conservative Party at the time just wasn't tapping into that need for Canadian people to talk about these issues that were happening. I'm the real conservative. I want real reform, real conservative reform. They don't want to have any discussion. Who's in your coalition? Who's in your tent? The people. <laughs> okay, but who? Which people? Uh, you know, Canadian consumers. Are you a feminist? I don't think so. Apart from that, he was focusing on policies that would reduce immigration, focus more on integration, advocating for free speech, proposing tax reforms. And to be fair, the mainstream news in Canada were also giving him a platform. I remember him going on the CBC, CTV, Radio Canada. But at the same time, he was also a controversial figure because he would be tweeting some pretty crazy but actually I, I don't know I kind of I find I find it kind of funny when looking at it now when it came to the debate on climate change he didn't want to abide by the Paris climate accord pushed back on the whole narrative against global warming which like fair enough but at the same time he called Greta Thunberg mentally unstable which really triggered the political establishment that led to calls for him to not participate in the debates but eventually they registered enough people in each writing across the whole country that the party became invited to the debates and the fact that he had formed that party barely a year and a half ago I mean looking at it from that perspective it's it's pretty impressive during the debate he had some pretty great moments to be honest against Jack Meet Singh or Elizabeth May you said that you didn't want me to be here on the stage to have a discussion with you so you're for diversity but what about diversity of opinion? I have the right to have another opinion about immigration, and I don't know why you're not, you, you're a leader, and you must be, try to have everybody on your side, but are you believing in Let free me speech? Question. Are you I believing in question. free speech only when people are saying things that you want to hear? You're asking the question, let me answer it. After a couple of minutes of this debate tonight, I think people can clearly see why I didn't think you should deserve a platform. The comments that you're making, the type of things you say, there's one thing to say that you disagree with somebody, that's fine. But when you incite hatred, when no, you incite I don't. division, no, I don't. It's not when you say you cannot say that. you insult just, a young girl I just want to have and a debate. ask about her mental stability. I find the things that Maxime Bernier has said to be completely appalling. And, and he knows that I feel that way about the things he says in the house. We used to sit together. And generally when Elizabeth. he said anything, Elizabeth. I'd have to put my head in my hands Elizabeth. because it was so horrific. I, I appreciate you, but you know, I don't share your policies. I, I don't that. share your socialist policies because you know, we won't be able to create any wealth with your policies. You have the same kind of policies than socialist countries like Venezuela. That won't create any wealth. Well, you must admit that. No, you always want to celebrate our diversity. People around the world we must celebrate our history. We must celebrate who we are. And I'm proud Canadian like you. And you know, we build this country together and we want this country to be like that in 25 years. But in the end, the PPC wouldn't win any seats during that election and would only get 1.6% of the national popular vote. And Bernier even lost his seat in Beauce, which he had held for a long time. From that moment on, it seemed that the PPC really went downhill, but I think a lot of that was 
even accelerated during the pandemic. Bernier became a pretty big critic of the government and their lockdowns, the mask mandates, the passports, all of these very controversial topics that in Canada, the Conservatives, the NDP, all the parties weren't touching apart from him. Even got arrested in June of 2021 in Manitoba for violating public health orders when he attended an anti-lockdown rally. And during the 2021 election, which is honestly the most useless election in Canadian history. They ran candidates and they actually won more votes than last time. They won 5% of the national popular vote during that time. And that's despite the fact that they weren't able to participate in the in the debates, but still didn't win any seats. So what kind of influence were they really having in parliament? None. And also right after the election, that's when the trucker protest happened. And he was, again, the only politician that actually went to the, the protest and outwardly supported them right away. And afterwards, like there were a couple of conservative MPs that said that they were supporting peaceful protesters. But from the beginning, Bernier didn't change his stance when it came to that. He was a supporter all the way. So that, that says something about him. But then we get to today where it's not very obvious what kind of role the PPC plays, especially given the fact that Pierre Poilievre is the leader of the Conservative Party now, and he's sort of leading that trek against wokeism and political correctness. Basically everything that Justin Trudeau stands for. He's also not gaining as much media attention. I haven't seen him on CBC or CBC. TV or any of these sort of legacy medias in Canada. The last time I saw him was on Rebel News probably a couple of months ago. But for people that are in Quebec, they might know that he appeared on Mathieu Bocoté's podcast, which actually made me learn a lot more about him and his stance and the relevancy of the People's Party today and how they can distinguish themselves from the, the Conservative Party. There are two main policy positions right now that Bernier is actively pushing was in the PPC and one of them is the war in Ukraine and the fact that we should be pushing more for a peace settlement between Ukraine, Russia, rather than just going with funding the war, essentially, which I think distinguishes him from the Conservative Party and, and the Liberal Party too, for that matter. And his stance on immigration is hasn't really changed, to be honest, and he seems almost to be vindicated now where we're having national discussions on the whole topic of immigration. And literally this week, Trudeau said that Canada doesn't have the capacity to properly integrate as much immigrants that we're taking in right now. And that's something that Bernier was saying four or five, six years ago now. And now people are talking the same thing that he was saying back in the day. And they were accusing him of being racist and blah, blah, blah. But now they're talking that way. So but he hasn't really changed his stance on climate change. Like ultimately, I think he just really wants to decentralize the federal government and give as much autonomy to provinces fighting for provincial rights, essentially. But ultimately, what will be the future of the People's Party of Canada? I'm not too sure, to be honest, because in the next election, I think people that might vote for Bernier are ultimately going to vote for Poilievre in mass so that they can get Justin Trudeau out of there. So that's going to leave the PPC with, again, a, a small share. And who knows? I don't think they're, they're probably not going to win a seat, if I'm being honest. When it comes to Maxim Bernier himself, I think he's always going to be part of Canadian politics in some way, you know. His stances now, especially when it comes to immigration, have sort of been vindicated. I also think he would have been a better candidate if he had won the 2018 leadership race. You know, I think he would have been a, a good leader for the Conservative Party. Maybe he would have not gone rogue like he did afterwards, you know. But I hope you guys learned something new about Canadian politics, the People's Party of Canada, and Maxime Bernier. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content, guys. I appreciate the support very much. Thank you. And I'll see you at the next one. Take care.